I'm Bill St. Pierre of St. Pierre Woodworking. Uh, recently, I came across a job for a client. Um, it was a mahogany table with turned legs. I've never done this, this type of thing before. Um, I had asked some other people if they were interested in doing it for me. Uh, nobody was really interested, so I did it myself. Um, I had a little bit of a problem trying to, trying to uh, find a way to keep all this the same, to keep the high point the same, to keep the low point the same, to keep it all even so that all four legs were identical. So I'm going to show you today on how you can turn a one turn leg or a turn and a quarter, turn and a half, whichever you prefer, um, real simple and real quick. Okay, so here's one of the legs before I, I put it in the lathe um, and started grinding on it. I started with a 4x4 four four stock. Um, just two pieces of two inch glued up, inch and seven eighths. Once I had my four by four stock, if you're going to do a mortise and tenon, you need to do the mortise and tenon first. You need to get that tenon in there while your stock is still square. Then I put it in the lathe and I got it, the cylinder, around where I wanted it. I got this point to a point where I wanted it. That's where I found out that I made a mistake. This point right here on this square has got to be the same as the cylinder. It's got to be the, from this point to the other point on the outside has got to be the same. That way there these corners are flowing into your high point. To do that I figured out what the, what, what the radius is going to be and that's what side I, that, that's, that's the size that I made this point. I then cut that on my bandsaw after my tenons were done. This point was then cut out. I put it in the lathe. I turned it down to this point. Then I had a smooth cylinder, and that's where I took, I'm doing a one quarter, or I'm doing a one turn. So then I took this point, I took this measurement, say it was 30 inches or whatever, that, then that, this measurement here would be seven and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half. There's your quarters. That would be one turn. Okay, so this, before you put it in the lathe and turn it, I also got these four squares. And I'm going to show you in a minute why that's necessary to have this cross square with the center right up here. I'm going to show you why I did that. So now we've got the cylinder, we've got the quarters turned or, or marked. Now, one, now I'm going to move to the lathe, the piece is already in the lathe. Now we've got it in the lathe. Um, now, now we need to get our curved lines. We need to figure out how these lines are. We've got our four quarters. We've taken our our measurement, we put that on there, we make the mark with, with, with the lathe on all the way around. Now we need to come and get this, this point here all the way around, okay? So as what I've done, this is where you need to come back to the end and this mark that we made earlier is transferred right up to the end. You make a mark right there, you make a mark right there, or right, right in, in the center of your holes, you make a mark right there. I then made this quick little jig and because I've already got square stock up here, I can just measure into the center of that. So I've got a mark there, a mark there. I put this jig on it. I centered it on both marks. And I made a line. I did that four times, all the, all the way around the piece. Found my square point that we made earlier. Found the center up here, made a line. Now as what that's done, is it's given me this po point. I've got this point coming this way and this way. Now you're wondering how are we going to get that curve now to line up. Real simple. Take a piece of masking tape. Go to the center of this point right here. Put your masking tape on and you're going to go and you're going to hit those points all the way down around the piece. Then you're going to mark it. There's that line. Once you get that line done, we go to the drill press. So now we have the line of where we want the bottom of the cove to be all the way up through our leg. Again, I, just, I, I was wondering, how am I going to keep that steady? How am I going to keep the depth right? Very simple. Make a simple little jig, put it in your drill press. The depth of that wants to be a little bit deeper than this point right here because you want that cove to kind of blend up into this piece right here. So you're going just a little bit deeper, you put it in the drill press, you start right here and you just follow that line, same depth, all the way down through on all four of your lines. Now you've got your center point. You're not going to erase it if it was just a pencil mark with your sander and lose that point. It's drilled in there. It's going to stay with you to the end. So we've done our mortise and tenons. We've got, we've, we've got this point on the bandsaw. 
We've got it nice and round all the way down through. Uh, you want, you, you, that needs to be real critical. You need to do a real good job when you're turning this on the lathe to get this point all true. Uh, we've got our drill holes, which is going to be the center of the, 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 uh, the cove all the way down through. Now we need to get our high point. We need to get this point right here. We've already established this point with the drill bit. Now we need to get this point because we want this to be the same as well as this. And to do that, we're going to do the same, we're going to do it the same way we did our holes here when we made our line. But as all we're doing is we're coming to the corners now because that point is going to flow right into these corners. If you've noticed, I've kept mine down just a little bit. That gives me a little bit of working room to bend that corner down in there and make it flow a little bit nicer. Um, that's entirely up to you. Now, to get this center point, you know, you can try to take a metal uh, tape measure and trying to get it measuring from here to here. That's not going to be very accurate. I made this quick little jig. It's the same size as this right here. It's got a center point. So as all I did was I held that center point in the center right on this line here. And I got two little marks. I just made a mark there and there and continued on down. Once I got those marks all the way around, I did the same thing with the tape. I started at the corner, I hit the marks, and I curled it all the way down around the leg and marked it. Point. I went to my local uh, store, my woodworking store, and I bought this little carbide bit. It's just a little grinding bit, but it's made for wood and wood only. Um, I put it on my, my, uh, my grinder fit real good and it works really good to get the bulk of the wood out. You're not going to do the finish work with this thing obviously. You're going to get the bulk of the wood out and then you're going to use your sander like this. It's going to be a rain uh, and that's what we're going to be using on that is the circular part of that sander. But I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to be using this part of this tool to get into this line. I'm going to be following that line. You've got to keep turning it and when I, again, when I was turning it on my, uh, my lathe, it was too free. I put this strap on it and tightened it up. That, that made it hard to turn. So it wasn't always turning on me when I was working on the piece. I'm going to show you real quick how to grind this out. I'm only going to do a little section. I'm then going to sand it real quick and show you how fast you can go through one of these legs. Take this sander real quick and I'm just going to clean it up. But you can probably get down to one of these legs in probably three or four hours now rather than 15 or 20. Um, I'll keep working on it with the sandpaper. I'll then go and then we're going to blend these corners right in. And like I say, we'll have a finished product at the end that looks just like this right here.